Hello, 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 and thank you for tuning in to the Keto Answers Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Anthony Gustin, and joining me this week is Bigger, the ketologist, for another Q&A episode. So in this one, it's basically a huge rundown of blood glucose and how you should look for it in food, all the foods that we have tested and how they affect us, how exercise impacts us, all this different stuff we ripped into it as well as a bunch of other random questions like how you should pack for keto when you are camping. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's action-packed one. So if you're interested in how to keep your blood sugar low while being on keto, I think there's gonna be some surprise in here from keto-friendly products that actually violate this code of spiking your blood sugar or not. So tune in if you are looking to know the answer. Before we get to the episode, I wanted to chat about our sponsor, Perfect Keto. Perfect Keto is all about making a ketogenic diet healthy and accessible. Whether you're reading all of our online guides or articles or enjoying Perfect Keto's exogenous ketones or any other keto-friendly products, everything you need to make keto work for you is at perfectketo.com. I know what you're thinking. Hey, aren't you the founder of Perfect Keto? Yep, that's right. And all of my insanely high standards have been put into making each and every product. My background as a functional medicine clinician helps me craft the cleanest and healthiest possible products and the best information about a ketogenic diet. Head on over to perfectketo.com to learn anything you need to know about the ketogenic diet. And if you've never tried any of our products before, feel free to use the code keto podcast for 20% off your first order. That being said, let's get into the show. All right, my man, Big Irv, here we are. Here we are. The ketologist. <laughs> yes. Ready for another round of questions. This one, we had some random ones, but mostly centered around blood sugar as I've been wearing my continuous blood glucose monitor again. Um, results of that, some of our products and exercise. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. First question we have is from Crystal Jokala. And the question is, if you went tent camping, what would you pack and eat for three days? A bunch of keto bars. <laughs> I thought that was what yeah, was I coming. Um, I'll probably do that. Some perfect keto products, obviously, nut butter packets, the, uh, the, the pack of macadamia nuts and some beef jerky. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I haven't ever gone tent camping before. Yeah. So I don't have a really great answer for that. What about you, Big Irv? Um, I would probably do a lot of, every time I've gone camping, it's been a lot of activity where I've been more focused on not trying to eat when I'm doing it. So I would probably bring exogenous ketones mm. just to kind of extend the fast a little bit, maybe some MCT oil powder. Uh, but then yeah, keto bars. I mean, are you going to have access in a tank camp situation? I've only done like one or two nights at a time mm-hmm. and I brought like little stoves with me. So if you're going to do that, I would bring a cooler with meat and eggs and whatever, like I normally eat. So mm. I wouldn't be restricted, but yeah, snacky type of food. So, you know, Maybe some coconut chips, maybe some macadamia nuts, beef jerky, keto bars, Mm -hmm. eggs, simple stuff. Yeah, it's the beauty of keto is that you don't have to uh, be eating every two hours. So, you know, just bring yourself some meat, have some big meals, and then some keto bars and snacks in between. You should be good to go. Or I would um, fashion a spear out of wood (laughs) and hunt for my food. (laughs) Fish or are you going for game meat? Oh, big game. Big game? Yeah, big game. It's probably a little bit easier. Bears, mountain lions, things like that, (laughs) depending where we are. (laughs) <laughs> all right all right there we go so next question we have is from nadia stall and it's do the artificial sweeteners and perfect keto products cause insulin spikes well the answer to that would be no because we don't use artificial sweeteners um, in any of our products stevia and monk fruit are two normal things found in plants i feel like we kind of ha- have to hash this through over and over and over again but they're, they're normal things that grow Monk fruit is a fruit and stevia is a plant, much like mint. Mm -hmm. And then we process those down and use those things. So they are not artificial. Okay. So do those spike insulin though? Yes, they, or no, no, no. (laughs) Do they? No, they do not. So this is another thing where people think that they could be harmful. Are are they healthy? Are they not? Um, There has been no deleterious effects to be shown. I mean, we've tested every single one of our products to that if they spike blood glucose or not. And the answer to that is no. So we do rigorous test- testing on all of our products. And from what we've seen, none of our products expect blood glucose. It's sort of an important point for us when we do product R&D. Um, so absolutely not. And all research sh- so shows that it might actually have a favorable benefit to exposal, exposing, not exposing, disposal of glucose mm-hmm. and potentially positive effects on the gut health. So mm-hmm. that's yeah, natural sweeteners too. And I think the other thing to consider is like compared to a product that's going to be containing like whole sugar, it's actually going to contain a significant amount of that. Our products aren't containing a significant amount of these sweeteners that we're using. It's yes, pretty low point. on the ingredient list. Yeah. So also, yes, yeah, stevia and monk fruit are like 
200 times to 300 times sweeter than sugar. So the mm-hmm. volume you use is actually way, way, way less as mm-hmm. well. Like a tiny, tiny amount. I think like an average serving, for instance, like a flavored MCT oil or something like that, it's like 50 milligrams, like a, like a one tiny pinch of stevia. Mm-hmm. So Not enough to cause any insulin response. Nope. All right. So that actually kind of leads into the next question, which is good. And it's from ZKK12, which is, I know stevia and monk fruit aren't supposed to affect blood sugar, but do they cause inflammation? Nope. (laughs) Sort of of another follow up here. But yeah, just like I said that they don't have any market things where it says, you know, these things are bad for X, Y, and Z. They've actually shown benefit to gut health and your microbiome, as well as potentially positive effects on blood sugar. So Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. I mean, I consume a lot of this stuff and I have extremely low levels of inflammation. I know tons of people who do the same thing. I have no concern. There's no reason why there would ever be a mechanism that I would assume that it would lead to inflammation. So yeah, I would say absolutely not. And yeah. potentially beneficial. Yeah, and I think the I would go with beneficial on that too because since you're not spiking insulin and you're not developing any sort of insulin resistance, you're probably going to be combating inflammation anyway. So I think it's actually going to have a more positive effect on inflammation. Bueno. Pretty straightforward. All right. Kyle Corbett or Corbet, Corbett 88. Any snacks brands besides your delicious keto bars that you've tested and don't spike blood glucose? (sighs) Not many, (laughs) unfortunately, which is why we're doing the products we're doing. And I mean, mean, like, we didn't select these questions to tutor and horn or anything like that. It's just, you know, we found some grouping of stuff. This fires us up, and this is what we want to chat about. But there are a few in this space. I've, I've tested a lot of stuff, so I've been using a continuous blood glucose monitor for kind of on and off since the middle of last year. And yeah, unfortunately, just very, very, very few products that actually do the thing here where like they actually test bars. So no keto bars, no bars in general that I've mm-hmm. tested. I've tested every single one from now on. Um, so a Primal Kitchen Bar, a Bulletproof Bar. Um, we just had one in today. Buff Bake did a new keto bar. Um, yeah, what are, what are some of the other ones? Like did the dang bar. Yeah. Every single one of these spike my blood sugar. Now, I want to put this out there. This is N equals one, and this is my experiment. So I know what I react to things. And for me specifically, everything that is a bar right now is just absolute trash. The reason why is because people generally use fibers that are really cheap and easy to hold things together. Our bar is extremely expensive to make because our ingredients are so expensive. Mm -hmm. So we had to basically develop a new type of fiber that doesn't spike your blood sugar, that holds a bar together with high fat content. Usually bars like RX bar, Lara bar, et cetera, have dates and things like that in it that have a natural binding to it because they're so sticky because they have so many carbohydrates in them. Very, very um, bad for someone who wants to do keto, obviously. And I just don't think that something like that, like you should be snacking on things that spike your blood sugar. I just don't believe that to be a wise decision. So yeah, I mean, the thing is that it's hard to make. It took us 18 months. We had to create basically an entirely new ingredient in this fiber to make sure our bars didn't spike our blood glucose. So other companies who do the same thing with other products, I don't think go through the same rigor of trying to find the new new ingredients. Like we're working on a ton of products because I haven't found any that do this. Um, So more brands, and I don't mean to throw them under the bus or anything. I think that there's a lot of these brands that they're, they're great people. They intend for like, you know, great things, but they're just not testing their product or at least it doesn't work for me personally. The other one would be Lily's that is a, you know, keto friendly quote unquote brand, but full of corn fiber, soluble, like inulin, sugar, things like this. Um, jacks me up really, really bad. Um, all the Chuck Zero products for chocolate destroy me and just make me actually feel really, really awful. I don't know if it's all this, I don't know, what are these in the soluble corn fiber or something like that? Yeah, I think so. Um, so no bars, no chocolate that I've found other than like 100%, which a lot of people don't like. And I think that to, unless you want to get like a really, really good 100% bar, then that's going to cost you like $12. And I haven't found a good alternative there. So we're working on chocolate and we have some approved. And uh, we'll chat about that next question. Um, uh, Nui cookies actually are the one cookie that I've tested that is great so no effect on my blood sugar i just they're a little heavy on the erythritol and the sugar alcohols for me so after usually one or so like i don't think my gut really likes that because they're mm-hmm. just like i don't know 10 plus grams of erythritol um no other cookie brand that i've tested is doesn't spike my blood sugar so i mean cookies besides new like new 
probably one of the only things I can think of. Obviously, gummies, people know my reaction. If they've listened to any of this stuff, how much I absolutely despise smart sweets and I hope that they crumble as a company. Um, and so we're working on that as well, getting into that gummy game. But yeah, I mean, they, they advertise as, you know, one, two, three grams of sugar and bro- literally broke my glu- glucose meter when I was wearing it. Um, what, are, what are some other ones that we've we've tried? I was going to say, what about something that's not sweet, though? So if they're looking for some snacks that aren't, you know, any beef jerkies, nuts, stuff no. like that out there. I mean, there. the only beef jerky that is out there right now is keto carne, and that's obviously good, but because they don't... So the problem with beef jerky, um, and we've toyed around with potentially launching one, but it's just you know not sort of on the, the front of our R&D list, is people use beef sugar and beef jerky to make it hold water content. And so when you process beef jerky with sugar, it keeps the water content up. And then you can use, because when you dry meat and you go from say like five ounces to two ounces, Mm -hmm. that yield is really, really important to sell to the product. And so if you're using high quality meat, the grass fed meat, Mm -hmm. and you want fattier cuts and you want to have no sugar in it, you're going to go from like five ounces to like 0.5 ounces in yield. Mm -hmm. And so basically companies use sugar as a way to retain moisture content. So it, it looks like it's more in a package and they can say like, this is three ounces of beef jerky and let's charge this much. Mm-hmm. So that's like a trick in the, in the jerky industry, in the meat industry, that sugar is used as a way to keep moisture for obviously like mouthfeel reasons as well. Like chewing on ultra dry meat is just not that great. That's why I don't really like biltong actually. It's like the, the vinegar taste, just the, the really dry taste is just not up my alley. I'm not a big fan of it. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, so jerky, like the keto carne stuff is sugar-free. It's just a little dry for my taste. It uh, doesn't mean it's bad. If you like if you like that stuff, then go for it. But, but yeah, man, I, like, I don't I don't really like – we'll, we'll get to Magic Spoon, which is a cereal, and a couple <laughs> questions because that's another one. But, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of like – oh, a killer – the killer creamery, that, that stuff's good. I've, I've tested that. And so that's good for ice cream. We did a, a joint partnership with them actually and, and did our nut butter, our bars, and our MCT oil all mixed up in there, caramel. Uh, it's pretty incredible. I think they might still have some pints left in the website. But yeah, that so that ice cream, what like what other snacks? I'm, I'm sure I've tested them. Can you think of the other snacks? Like well, basically <laughs> any brands are going to be at KetoCon this year? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Recently, I there was a there's a newer snack that just came to market probably in the last like six to eight months called Revel Snacks. Oh yeah, yeah. I tested those. Those are good. Yeah, those ones I had a really good yeah. response to. Like hardly any blood glucose yeah, response so to th- those. Yeah, those are really good too. So they had like these matcha balls. I remember you gave me those. Those. Yeah. Um, so those checked out. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to think of I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, I haven't of the ice creams, just to kind of go back on that, because I know there's quite a few out on the markets. I've tested a lot of the other ones, and um, the Rebel is the only one I've seen that's had good results. All the other What about the Killer? I'm sorry, Killer. Yeah, the yeah. Killer one. Rebel did not check out. <laughs> uh, I haven't uh, tried Rebel stuff. Yeah, I, I just tested Rebel last week and uh, had a little bit of an issue looking at their net carbs. Um, a lot of things didn't check out when I was trying to run the numbers on that, and when testing it, uh, I did not have a very favorable response. Um, but I think, you know, the, the biggest one that I've experienced and you brought up earlier is the, um, eat smart sweets gummies. That's by far the worst one that I've tested so far. That one almost uh, double and a half. It was like 2.5 times on my blood glucose yeah, I mean, within 30 the, the, minutes. It's incredible. Again, I don't really mean to throw many brands under the bus. I think that everyone's trying to do their own thing, but this company is literally like being deceitful in my opinion, mm-hmm. how it impacts people's blood sugar is criminal. I think that they should be banned or be forced to change the label. It's, it's absurd. Mm-hmm. And if you don't agree with what I'm saying, go get a blood glucose meter and eat like 15, 15 gummy bears, like one of these tiny packets and see what happens to your blood sugar. It's, it's fucking insane. Yeah. And I think one thing to point out too is that I've noticed at least for people who are doing keto for a longer period of time, like you and I have, we're typically a little bit more resilient to things that spike our blood glucose. At least I am. Um, and so that's why when a product spikes my blood sugar, I kind of assume that it really does rank pretty low because if I've been, you know, I've been following keto for three and a half years, being a little bit more resilient. Um, I feel like if it's spiking my blood sugar, it's going to be spiking everybody else's a lot worse. <laughs> um, oh, the eating evolved butter, uh, coconut butter cups and stuff like that. Oh uh, yeah. Those are great. Those are, those are good. Um, I'm not a huge fan. Of, uh, I'm just a, sort of a chocolate freak. And I think to make 
products that are affordable. Like you can't really use that high quality chocolate. I know they do 100. percent And so, mm-hmm. I think the ones that are sweetened are a little too much stevia for me. Um, but yeah, I mean those are those are. I mean, if you, I know a lot of people like, like those things and, and really enjoy them. They're carried at Whole Foods, easy to get. So those check out if you know for blood sugar stuff. I'm trying to Google and see if there's any other snacks that I, I've missed. Um, yeah, we've talked about Chalk Zero. Again, just don't do all that. I know, again, a lot of people love those snacks. Oh, oh um, 4505 pork rinds. Mm-hmm. Love those. All right. Man, those are phenomenal. Those are really good. Yeah. Uh, so I usually get those at Whole Foods when I'm you know, on the road or something like that. Um, Epic is sometimes they have a lot of products, and I've chatted with them about getting more information on the front of package because I have like, 30 SKUs when I go to a grocery store, and some are really, really great when you flip it over and look at the carb content and the sugar content, and then some are not so great. And mm-hmm. so some of the ones that have like under a couple grams of sugar are totally, totally fine. And then some, some are just not. And so, I mean, they're, they're trying to appeal to a wider audience, so that makes yeah. sense. Some people want a little bit sweeter of a snack, and some people don't. Um, most beef sticks are good. So that's a way to, to kind of create a little bit of a – work around here because jerky like, jerky versus beef stick you don't need to have the same amount of sugar content in a beef stick because mm-hmm. it uses more fat so it's kind of like a sausage instead of actual jerky any beef sticks that you recommend that are better than others i mean like not as far as like a, how it impacts your blood glucose not i haven't seen anything different i really like the new primal ones for taste nice i don't know if you have a i like chomps chomps, chomps. one i yeah. mean yeah all beef sticks are, pre- are, are I think, pretty much the same pretty, yeah pretty much the same but yeah, I haven't had any. Like, I, I, there's a Yoba Yo or you or Yoba Yai or something like that. They have this. It's like the biltong of sticks. They're called mm. Joverse. D R O E W O R. Something. It's, it's another like South African thing. Mm-hmm. Um, those are really good. They're sort of like tough chew on, but yeah, you know, I mean they're good. So most beef sticks are are pretty phenomenal. Um, of of biltong, do you have a favorite? I haven't. We like Kalahari. Uh, bloke. Bloke block. Bloke or block, yeah, B-L-O-K. Yeah. That's been that's the one that I think has the most unique flavor mm. for me, and um, and they're all uh, I've tested. I mean, not not a huge reason to test Biltong because there's really not anything in there that you have to worry about most cases, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, their their stuff's pretty good. I like the garlic Kalahari. Mm, I don't know if I've had that one. Am I saying this one right? Kalahari. Yeah, that's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's uh, that garlic one is, is pretty damn good actually. Yeah. But again, it's like. You can only choose through so many bags of like any brands built on in my opinion. They're just yeah. like, I don't know. I I probably have a weird bias to jerky because when I was younger, I would go through like two pound bags of Jack Links <laughs> and just crush the good them. stuff yeah, there. I mean, I mean it was a, that stuff was like gold to me. It was just like I remember back at, I was like broke in undergrad and I was like nineteen. I'd go to Sam's Club and like splurge and get ten dollar bags of two of two pounds of Jack Links jerky. Yeah, um, they just actually came up with a sugar free. Sugar-free jerky. Really? Yeah, it's here in the office. I bought some. Are they replacing it with something? Um, no, it's like zero, zero sugar. It's, wow. I mean, it's uh, taste isn't that that great, I would say. But I think that's sort of just benchmarking it against their their sugary stuff, right? And I think that's like at scale. It's like they, it's it's. I mean, with any business, it's really really tough to keep quality as you scale. I mean, th- their distribution is insane, and mm-hmm. so like I I think that. The, them putting in a sugar-free jerky is f- amazing. Mm-hmm. And if I mean, I don't care what quality beef it is. Like, if, if that's available for people at a gas station or convenience store, that's that's awesome. Like, I, I'd probably like turn to that into a pinch if I wanted to. Yeah. Um. And they prom- they promote it very clearly in the front of the package. Um. So hats off to them actually nice. for being like a big brand to, to go on. Like, I know it's sort of a trend right now, but regardless to, for for a big brand to start offering that, if the, the, the distribution they have, I think that's actually pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Um. Just trying to think if there's any other keto snacks. I mean, I'm sure I've tested. I, we, like, if anything new comes out in Keto Land, we buy it and it's out of the office within like, I don't know, three days. Yeah. So we're it's sort of like an R and D focus for us, just because we're always trying stuff. Um, but yeah, I think. Oh, uh, the I'm trying to think here. Um, these Tom and Jenny's caramels. I don't know if you've seen those around. I'm not. Um, said may support your keto diet on their Amazon listing page. Um, those kind of destroy me a little bit. They, they taste awesome. 
like they're they're like true caramel, so they're amazing. Actually really? tasting, and then like, man, this is this seems too good to be true. And like for my blood sugar, it is. But again, like I want to emphasize for people that these brands all probably mean well, and everyone's putting out interesting stuff. But your metabolism may vary, so mileage may vary for you. So just test for yourself. If you want to do this, that is the most important thing I think you could take away from this. So yeah, that's don't... this is just a result for me, mm-hmm. and I I want to optimize my goals for reducing blood sugar in the area under the curve of my blood sugar spikes. That's just my approach to nutrition. That's what I want to optimize for. And so if our, you know, that's why we don't have products. Like I test all the products that we launch on myself. So it's like sort of selfishly making all of our products for, for myself, but that's just sort of what I'm optimizing for. And yeah. so if, if you, that's not important to you, no problem. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that these brands are good or bad or, or anything in between. You just have to figure out what your goal is and sort of optimize for that. And so this is, this is my goal and what I'm optimizing for. And it's just my experience as an individual. Yeah, and I think it's important to point out too that you know we understand not everybody's going to want to do as rigorous of testing that we do on ourselves regularly. But if you are having any of these snacks that we mentioned here frequently, then it's probably worth testing to know if these things are spiking your blood sugar and kicking you out of ketosis. It's a big difference between having something occasionally versus eating it every single day. And if, if some of these snacks are spiking your blood sugar every day, then that can, can be really hanging you up from reaching any of your health goals. So uh, like I said, don't have to necessarily test everything that you put in your body, but the stuff that you're eating frequently, it's definitely worth finding out its impact. Yeah. I mean, look, like we sell packaged food. All of these things are packaged foods. I wouldn't live off this stuff. Like, right. We should eat whole real foods and you should eat enough where you don't need to snack all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think there's gaps where convenience is nice, traveling on the go, don't have time, busy or whatever, but ultimately you should be planning your meals around real food, right? meat, vegetables, whatever you want to do, like a like decent fat amount, a lot mm-hmm. of micronutrients, things like that, and eat enough where you don't have to snack in between meals. Like that's what I'd recommend first. Right. Um, a lot of people I think go a little crazy with this stuff and try to make these really weird fake food combinations and pile on all these processed ingredients. And I mean, again, our, <laughs> our products are, are technically processed foods to some degree. Obviously, I make them with a very high standard, but I want people to be eating real food first. So mm-hmm. that's my recommendation. After that, then look at, okay, if I'm now eating real food, high, like high quality stuff a couple times a day, and I find myself in these predicaments where I want some convenient stuff or whatever, then fit that into your goal specifically. Mm-hmm. And so that can be different for everybody. But yeah, that's sort of what I would recommend when you're testing this stuff out. All right. All right. So on the same uh, note for snacks, Hannah Mintag says chocolate. It's not really a question, but something that we'll talk about well, here. Yeah, it's, there's a question there. <laughs> uh, chocolate covered almonds. I hope they are passing testing. Can't wait for those. Yeah. So our VIP customers at Perfect Keto got a pre-order for chocolate covered macadamia nuts, chocolate covered almonds, and a trail mix with chocolate covered pumpkin seeds and a bunch of other stuff in there. Ooh. Um, and yeah, everything's past testing. We're in production. So those should be launching in August. I'm super, super pumped for those. Like this is one of those things where, man, we had a bag of the chocolate covered macadamia. That's like an eight pound bag in the office. Didn't last long. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we went through it pretty damn quick. And <laughs> this is like, this is one of those things that I wanted so, so badly. Cause this is another thing that I grew up on is, uh, you know, I think the first time I had, it, I was in Hawaii. My sister got married and I was, you know, I was like 18 or 19. And I was like, holy shit, this exists. Yeah. And then like, obviously I wasn't as strict about my nutrition then, you know, 11, 12 years ago, but the, the combination of dark chocolate and macadamia nut is just to die for in my opinion. It's like yeah. the best snack ever. And so what we did is we made our own, sp- like, man, making keto chocolate was brutal. And it, it was one of these things, kind of like our bars where we went back and forth for over a year, a bunch of different manufacturers trying to figure out how to sweeten it, how to, how to make it not disgusting. But also with chocolate, you sort of have to ride this line of going like small batch. Mm-hmm. And having a farm that can produce the same amount of nibs. So that way you can scale. So like for instance, if we had we were using like these really crazy high-end nibs from Peru or Ecuador or something like that, but they could only yield like it would only end up being like four thousand packages a year. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we sell way more than that. And so yeah. it's like, okay, how, like how do we get enough scale at this stuff and have it be so that it's tastes really good and is super high quality and organic and all that stuff. The farm's awesome to check out like, okay, the working conditions, right? Like the whole supply chain of chocolate was actually really, really hard to nail down, Mm -hmm. but also sweeten it in a way. Cause like another weird thing about, this is just kind of like a background into a product R and D at this point, but (laughs) we like 
to get sweetness carried through chocolate, like sugar, the sugar molecule is actually pretty large and can distribute evenly throughout ch chocolate when it melts down. But having stevia and monk fruit, you can't do that. And so what happens is then you get concentration of the actual sweetness in the chocolate. And so what a lot of other brands do, like Lily and, and a bunch of other ones like, like this, is they put a lot of erythritol or inulin or cornstarch or corn fiber in these things mm -hmm. because that way the stevia and monk fruit can disperse throughout the entire chocolate. Mm -hmm. But we don't like those ingredients and we think that they lead to a poor product experience is not only taste, but texture and spiking blood sugar. So these are right. things that like we wanted to have something super high quality, didn't have these fillers in it, but also try to figure out how to spread sweetness evenly throughout. So mm -hmm. actually we found, we, did, we don't use stevia in the chocolate, I believe, but we have like a base of chocolate now that um, you have to wait until it launches <laughs> for you figure out how we did this, but we sweetened it with the natural ingredient that I've toyed around with actually like when we first started doing the nut butters. Um, that, yeah, like dropping in August, I'm super pumped about it, but now we can sort of use this chocolate base in a bunch of different ways. So we're gonna produce bars, um, we're gonna do our nut butter in cups hopefully soon, um, and a bunch of different, basically anything that you imagine in chocolate. Now that we kind of crack the code on, you know, a chocolate that tastes good, um, we can use in a lot of different products, and that it has high quality keto friendly ingredients that don't spike your blood sugar. It was like, you know, it was, it was dude, it took forever. Trying to figure out like, okay, is this bar, like, it's a seesaw of, of this bar like sucks from an ingredient standpoint and then it tastes good, but then it doesn't perform well. And then back yeah. and forth and back and forth and back and forth, but we finally nailed it. Um, but yeah, food products are food products are hard, man. Yeah, it's amazing how you go from, you get one in, you're like, oh, it tastes good, but we don't like the makeup of it. And then we switch that and it comes back. It's like, oh, it tastes like shit. And then you just right. keep, it's just back and forth. Right, and right, right. It takes a long time. Yeah. But for everybody, for all those questions about the snacks, you guys can add those ones to your list. And did you say it's August those are going to be dropping? Yep, August. August. Awesome. Yeah. So, Which is the dumbest time possible to launch fucking chocolate products. Right. <laughs> yeah. Try, trying to ship them around the country. It's August. Everywhere is 150 degrees. Might want to put those in your fridge when you get them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So next question is one that I'm, I was pretty bummed about because – for years, I've been telling people that you can find replacements for a lot of non-keto friendly foods, um, but cereal has been one of the hardest ones. So when this product came to the market, I was super stoked about it. Um, but we're talking about Magic Spoon here. So Taylor J. 2012 said, what did Magic Spoon peak your blood sugar at? Yeah, so I was posting this on my Instagram last week in my stories. Um, so again, Magic Spoon is a cereal. It's a marketed as keto friendly. They you use a lot of different things in there. I, I think it's mainly like a whey protein or, or milk protein of some sort, allulose. Yeah, yeah look at the ingredient list. Um, some sort of, I think it's chicory root fiber and inulin for the fibers. I'm not positive. I think Chris will. Yeah, we'll the, bring this up. Um, but anyways, I tested it. So I had roughly two cups across all the flavors. And yeah, so yeah. it's a uh, whey protein isolate, high oleic sunflower oil. Um, tapioca fiber, monk fruit, paprika extract, and beet juice. So at first look, that's, when you look at it- That's it, Magic Spoon? That's- um, it was a cereal school. Oh, this is cereal school. You're right. Wow, good marketing. They stole Magic Spoon when I tried to Google it. Interesting. Yeah, I mean- so Also not great, but let's see. Magic Spoon. So it's a, actually a protein blend between um, milk protein isolate, whey protein isolate. Then it's coconut oil, tapioca flour, then it's a blend of allulose, monk fruit extract, stevia extract, and then they use chicory root fiber, cinnamon, and then natural flavors. Yeah, so let's start with rating the product on taste. It's phenomenal. So like, like it, it tastes, I think that, I can't remember, the frosted one's incredible, the free one tastes like just like, um, like Fruit Loops. Yeah. Um, I mean, you tried them, right? I haven't tried them. I saw your results. I didn't try them. <laughs> we should try them. I mean, we have we have them all at the office. They're, yeah. I mean, the, the, they they crush it. Taste, consistency, etc. Um, and again, this is just. I mean, the branding is great. I think they they did a really really great job. I think they're doing really well. Um, again, my personal experience, my blood sugar went from eighty three to um, I think like one twenty eight, and it lasted for hours. And this is another important point that people need to realize that like when, when I eat fruit or something like that and splurge and some stuff, like it may spike 40 points or so, but it comes down within like 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. You want to look at the area and the curve of blood glucose spike. So the longer it stays elevated, the worse it is for you. Mm -hmm. And this is the same thing that happens with these bars. And I think it's because a lot of these fibers that, that brands are using. Yeah. Um, rather, Cause like people think, Oh, fiber, slow digesting. Great. 
but that's not necessarily the best thing. Like, so if it's a fiber that actually spikes your blood sugar and doesn't act as a true fiber, we you have something just hanging around your digestive system that's spiking your blood sugar for four hours, mm -hmm. which is terrible. Yep. And again, for me, test this on yourself. If you want to know how it impacts you. Um, didn't didn't fare very well. So yeah, bumped it up to I think like 125, 128, something like that for f like roughly four hours. Wow. Which is the, that's crazy. It's almost the same response I had to all the bars. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense because they're pretty much the same ingredients. Um, I think to the point you're saying too, like if you're somebody who's going to have like fruit or something like that, like we don't really fear being kicked out of ketosis temporarily, but if you're going to have elevated blood sugar for hours after consuming something, then that's obviously not going to be what you're, if you're trying to follow keto, that's not going to match your goals. Right. But try for yourself. Um, one weird side effect as well. I didn't eat it because I didn't want it, the test results to be skewed by any sort of milk, nut milk or whole milk or whatever. Mm. So I ate it alone, just dry. And I'm sure that they don't intend this to happen. And I don't know if they've gotten this complaint or like it's an AQ or anything. Um, so, I mean, if you're on a magic spoon team, please reach out and we'll, we'll update this stuff and put it in the show notes and give the listeners any sort of resources they want. But it like wore out the top of my mouth mm. and my, the top of my mouth was raw for like three to four days. I couldn't eat or drink anything mm. normally. So I don't know if that was just, so I, this is sort of the same Captain Crunch effect. Yeah. I, yeah. I used to get when I was a kid as well. Yeah, I, I remember like, that. Eating Captain Crunch had the same results. So I don't know if it's just how it's processed. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge like, dry cereal eater. So I don't know if this is just a common thing for cereal, if it's mm -hmm. this product of certain fibers in general. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that overall tastes great, looks great, um, just doesn't make yeah, didn't didn't perform well on my blood glucose, and um, I I try like a a little bit after the next day, like half a cup, and it sort of you know it was like fifteen twenty points mm -hmm. raised for me, so it was it was wasn't as crazy as the first spike, mm -hmm. but I would usually eat way more than that at a time. Right. Uh, but I just wanted to see like w you know was it some other extraneous things? Like usually when something like that, we're like I wanted it to be. I wanted to pass the glucose test for right. me so goddamn bad. Like, <laughs> actually, with with milk, it's it's fucking delicious. It's, it's like it's a really great product. Just like now, I just know I'm like I'm this doesn't work for me. Right. So I would kind of knock it off my list of guilty pleasures. Unfortunately. Do you have any uh, thoughts on allulose? Because that's kind of a booming ingredient right now, and that's one of the things they're using. Yeah, I think Virk's still out for me. Like I, I know you're a big fan of it. I just, honestly I haven't done that much research. I've been too busy running the company to, to know. So if you want to give us a little stance update. Yeah, I mean, I from testing different products that contain allulose, I've seen very mixed results. So it's hard to say. I think just from a purely but science. The question is like, is that from the allulose or something else? You know? Yeah, and that, that's the hard thing to determine. I know from you know from a purely scientific standpoint and like looking at like the molecular structure of allulose, I think it's intriguing. Um, I think it's, you know, it's interesting and it's, I would have to think is a good alternative to sugar. So if it's another option for people to use in product development, I think that could be a good thing, but I've seen such mixed results that it's hard to know. And when you look at a product like this too, it's like hard to tell if, you know, is that coming, is a response coming from the allulose? Is it coming from the chicory root fiber? Is it coming from the tapioca flour that they have? It's really hard to determine that. Probably, it's probably tapioca flour. Yeah. Usually when that stuff goes into the flower state mm -hmm. sprayed on all these other things and that's what what causes the spike um that i mean that's i've tried the, these ingredients by themselves and that's sort of the sugar root and fiber together especially have just like destroyed my blood sugar so i, I would assume that's what it is and mm -hmm. um, what would be interesting is if we just did like a crazy allulose challenge so what we should do is I mean, I actually continue to blood glucose monitor the libre i was 20 the libre freestyle mm -hmm. i was using the dexcom g6 before which i think um it's sort of like the gold standard. It costs like basically three thousand dollars a month, roughly, which is absurd. Wow, um, like two or three k if you're going out of pocket. Don't, don't basically have diabetes that you're managing. Um, the Libre f Freestyle is like a hundred bucks. So I was like, okay, or two hundred bucks a month, roughly. So a hundred dollars for each two weeks. Um, the Libre Link app is so annoying because you can't zoom in and see. Like minute by minute, you have to. So you have to use the app. You scan the device on your arm, mm. and it gives you readings of the last eight hours. But you can't zoom in. You can't see exact points. So you basically have to scan every time you want to see anything. Oh wow! Um, and then it fell off. And I put one on Justin as well, um, uh, another perfect team member, and his fell off in three days as well. So like you have a fourteen day meter that you pay for, but then it falls off in three days. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, what was I talking about? 
Oh, Alios. We should we should put these things back on. Uh, they, they both the G6 and the Libre freestyle seem to be, you know, perfectly accurate. Every time I calibrated them, they were within like three to four points of a actual blood glucose meter. And so, I would love to just like down forty grams of Alios. See what happens. Yeah. See what happens to my gut. See what happens to the. Cause like you're never gonna eat that much, but like might as well go in the extreme end and see what happens. Yeah. So if you're if you're down for this, even if we want to do a meter, let's do it next week or a couple of weeks from now. Yeah, I'm down. We'll have to, we might have to stay close to a bathroom if we're gonna be taking down 40 grams of that stuff though. Yeah. Let's give it a <laughs> shot. I, I mean, I'm totally not a fan of this type of stuff because it, it usually comes from corn, and yeah, I'm just I hate the corn industry. Mm -hmm. Passion. I think that this government subsidies and they could go on and on and on about how bad it is for the environment and monocropping all this shit but like i don't know i just i'm not a big fan of sourcing it from corn and we've looked into sourcing it from other places i think we can get it from like pear but it's like 18 times more expensive or something ridiculous yeah and it's like one of those things where no one's going to know or care about that yeah and do we want to make that sacrifice and make our product 18 times more expensive like people are going to care about our price and they're going to complain about everything yeah um so this is where having high standards sucks yeah constant <laughs> um, battle but yeah all so right. That was the that was the recap of Magic Spoon stuff. So, if well, you guys are listening, and you want some help with R and D to make one that doesn't spike your blood sugar, happy to help. Um, I just want an awesome product out there. Yeah, so reach we out. We want cereal. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question we have is from Jarrett Bellamy, and it's when your blood glucose jumps, do you notice any changes in how you feel? Less when it jumps, like when it starts peaking and goes over maybe like one thirty, one forty. I start to feel not like anxious or anxiety but it's like not stable with mm -hmm. energy so it's a little bit a little bit jittery yeah and then after that like when i feel the worst is when it starts crashing down so when it goes from 120 130 140 and it starts you know falling quickly or not back down in like the hour after that mm -hmm. that's when i feel awful so yeah. just completely lethargic brain fog terrible um and then i think that depending on what i'm eating alongside that is you know, some ancillary effects. Like if I'm eating like grains or anything like that, then I'll start to feel bloated mm -hmm. and even worse mentally. But it's just the energy for me and the mental performance is a big one too. So yeah. like physical and mental energy are just, just plummet and I feel terrible. And that can last anywhere from one to four hours typically, mm -hmm. depending I think on how high the, the snacks were or the, how the spikes were. But like, yeah, something like those ridiculous smart sweets <laughs> to feel terrible. Like you feel... Yeah wiped out like you need to take a nap and like you brain fog and you can't speak clearly um it's awful yeah so. yeah i think a big one that i experience is like fluttery heart rate when it gets up really high that's really the only thing that i'll notice while it's actually peaking but uh when it's yeah when it's on its way down when you start crashing it's pretty horrible all right last question we have is from marissa valise and it is how do different exercises impact your blood sugar uh, running, yoga, boxing, functional movement, et cetera. So this is sort of a interesting question. I don't, I don't think you should be thinking about this as far as like it being bad by any means. So I don't know what you mean as far as like which ones are best for regulating blood sugar at the time, later in the day, et cetera. So this is a, a tough question to answer with that. Mm -hmm. So I'll try to be as broad as possible in my answer. Um, but... Generally speaking, you're going to see a rise in blood sugar when you're working out. Mm -hmm. So you'll have, I mean, your, your body's always, it's not just only using ketones or only using glucose. You use a blend of it sort of whenever. And so the more intense your exercise, a lot of times you can have more demand on glucose in your muscles. Mm -hmm. And so the way it gets there is through your bloodstream. So this is not to be concerned with you just eating something and it floating around your bloodstream. So like the difference between this is like, if you eat something, you have to put the glucose somewhere. And if you're not working out, then your muscles and your tissues aren't saying like, okay, this is where I want this thing. Mm -hmm. And so you, you're taking it outside of the body and then you force your body to do something with that glucose. Right. So then it can float around, be inflammatory, especially if it's like for four hours, not knowing what the hell to do and constantly getting released in your bloodstream. And your body typically puts into fat cells or deals with it. Or like if you have any glycogen to re-up in, in muscle, muscle or liver, then it can go there as well. But typically floats around, I mean, we don't need to get crazy into the, the weeds on the uh, actual physiology of this, but yeah, I mean, not not ideal in that scenario because you don't have nothing to, like, there's no reason for you to be having that fuel in your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Your body didn't need it. You just took it in from the outside without needing it, right. usually. Um, when you exercise and your blood sugar goes up, this is not a cause for concern because it is demand-driven by your tissues. Mm -hmm. And so your body goes, okay, 
I've used X amount of glucose. Please release some of that so that way I can, you know, have this for a fuel to continue my workout. Mm -hmm. And then it continues to go in there. And so as an example, I know it's like the more intense my weight training sessions are, it'll go up maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 points. Um, but then my baseline for the rest of the day will then decrease and go down, you know, 10 to 20 points and hold there for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And so you actually, you make your tissues more sensitive to the uptake of glucose for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. you, and so there's a lot of different glucose transporters on the cell membranes of your muscles and other tissues. So if you're working out, you basically open up these channels and say, okay, I need some glucose for this. And then your body starts mobilizing some of it and it puts it in those tissues. And so for instance, if I wake up and I'm like 80, 85, 90 for my average blood glucose, and then I do a really hard training session, it'll go up transiently. And then afterwards we'll go down below that baseline I was at before, you know, mid seventies or so, and then we'll be at that point for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've played around with this or I've had any feedback as well, but yeah, same thing. Um, pretty much any type of exercise that I do, I especially have noticed like in doing like uh, basketball when playing that, when I test afterwards, my ketones will also be extremely elevated, but my glucose will be through the roof during that time. But I think it's a combination of a couple things. Uh, it's in the morning, which is also a time when you get a little bit of a blood sugar response. And also it's a, it's a pretty stressful um, and strenuous activity. And any time you're getting a, a stress response out of your body, you're going to see an increase in your blood sugar. But like you said, what matters more importantly is how your body is getting back to baseline. And for me, I typically see like within an hour and a half after exercise, I'm returning back to a baseline number or dipping lower. And that's pretty pretty much standard for any exercise that I do. Yeah, I, I would not figure this thing. It's like, this is where a lot of people, they go, oh, don't you need carbs around a workout? No. Like, your body does it itself. Yeah, you, your body will make and deliver whatever carbs you typically need. Yeah. And like, we, we can argue all day long about for performance, et cetera, in different sports. But generally speaking, if, if you don't eat carbs around your workout and you see your blood sugar spike, your body's handling it. Right. So don't freak out about that. And like, this is, I mean, this is another reason why I think that blood glucose monitors, continuous ones especially, should be available to every single person so they know what's going on in their body. Right. And I understand some of the, the hangups on why it's not allowed currently, because if you could do that, then you need to, you know, people could manage diabetes in it or whatever, but like, man, like, this is just something like, we don't have access freely mm -hmm. to be able to know what's going on in our body when the technology is there. It's, it's madness. Right. And it pisses me off. Yeah. And the, the benefit that the population would gain as a whole versus like maybe one or two people who would manage diabetes or I don't know, whatever more without their doctor's help, or whatever. Like if you have a condition, it's your responsibility to manage that with your doctor. Mm -hmm. But to hold back information about your own body because some people with a condition may mismanage it because they're being irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Some people's irresponsibility shouldn't outweigh the positive benefit for everybody else. Yeah. And if people could figure out you know, like we talked about in this episode, what foods react best for them, what exercise reacts best for them, like stress mm -hmm. and how stress affects people. Um, I had some friends wearing some stuff earlier and they're like, why is my blood sugar so high in the morning? Like, why is it so high all day today? And it just basically comes down to your stress response. Mm -hmm. And something that I figured out too, is like the more stressed I was, the higher my baseline would be. And like, it'd yep. be market, like up to 100, 110 points, mm -hmm. uh, milligrams per deciliter. And that's, that's like if I ate a sugary meal all day long just because of stress. Right. And so then using that as a way to figure out, okay, let's reduce stress in these ways or whatever. I mean, the, the fact that we can't do this on our own without a prescription, mm -hmm. like to get a continuous blood glucose monitor, you need a prescription, which is madness. Like yeah. You can go to Walgreens and buy one that you can poke your finger with mm -hmm. and know that without a prescription, but you can't have it be a better experience where it, it reads it all the time. It makes it easier. Like no one's going to be working out and stopping every 10 minutes to check their fucking blood sugar right. in, a, in a meter. Like, why are we holding this information back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think people being able to see this stuff can be really eye-opening, especially for people who maybe aren't making dietary changes yet or lifestyle change changes to manage things like stress. I think being able to actually see what happens to your body under these different conditions, whether it's eating the certain food or putting yourself in a stressful environment, I think that can be pretty life-changing and change the way that somebody – you know, change your habits. And so oh, yeah. it's, it's, it, I mean, it's right. all about a feedback loop. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like when you eat a food, generally speaking, you have like a very soft feedback loop, if mm -hmm. not for a long period of time. So like a story I tell often with this is when I eat wheat, I have like three or four days before I get acne, but I'll get acne pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. And 
So like, if I were just to eat weed all the time, I have no idea that that was going on. But if, yeah. if it was cropping up right when I was eating it and I was having zits pop out of my face as I was eating a croissant, I wouldn't eat them anymore. Yeah. And I think that the same thing with blood sugar, it's like a lot of times, even when we talked about earlier, like I can, might feel this crash four hours later, but it's like, okay, what was that from? Is it because I didn't sleep last night? Is it because I'm bored? Is it mm-hmm. whatever? Like you don't have this tight correlation. Right. But if you eat a food and see and your app on your phone buzz, it's like, hey, your blood sugar is now this bad or that bad. Mm-hmm. You would know and you could approximate and you have this feedback loop tightly regulate for you the best foods, the best exercises, et cetera. Um, and I think that, that, that sh- as long as we can shorten up the feedback loops in health, people will be healthier faster. Right. Um, but we just don't have the tools for that. Yeah. Agreed. So eventually I will, if no one else takes this problem on, uh, I will divert energy and solve it. So you can trust on that. Stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Well, hopefully I didn't come across as perfect keto, perfect keto ad. Um, that was not the intention. But yeah, I mean, this is how we look at product development, what, how we, you know, we're really re- rigorous with this stuff. And again, a lot of these brands are, could be good for you. Test for yourself. Use what you want. Eat real food. And until next time, we'll be back. Bye-bye. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Keto Answers Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. But even if you didn't, I would love a review. Just go over to iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast, and pop in a review so we can get found by more people, get better guests, and have the information that you need. So please go to iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast, and leave us a review. And if you're new to keto, head on over to perfectketo.com slash podcast and enter your email for all our top tips and guides on getting started with the ketogenic diet. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.